Friday night, y'all. Smackdown time. Welcome to the Wrestling Inc. podcast. I'm Glenn Rubenstein. Yeah, joined yes. by Flobo Boyce. And tonight, George Hermosa making his Wrestling Inc. podcast debut. George, welcome to the show. Second second show ever. Smackdown oh, okay. debut. Smackdown. Jay Cargill, Smackdown Jay Cargill debut. debut. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. You know, we'll just call them all. First time ever. Yeah. Once in a lifetime. It's my first time also, so it works out. <laughs> Once in a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> the okay, so uh we're here tonight. Smackdown on the road to WrestleMania. Man, that ending. Uh, we got a lot to talk about, but that last segment, 15 minutes of entrances, 15 minutes of content. I don't know if that was timed correctly. They tried something new, more power to them. But uh yeah, we'll have some thoughts some feelings uh final testament how's that going <laughs> all that and more on tonight's wrestling inc and again i love carrying cross and scarlet they're the nicest people please cross yeah. cut, cut your hair and you will get your power back my it's god reverse samson reverse I'm, samson. Glad I'm not the only one yes reverse samson uh okay so, uh, Fobo, what's going on in the news? I disagree. Those who have here have an obligation to grow it out. But I'm just bold. <laughs> uh, let's let's talk about it. Uh, the big story this week is more developments in the whole Jack Perry and CM Punk situation. As you know, we haven't seen Jack Perry since last August. And the world's like, oh, where's, where's Jack Perry at? Well, Dave Melzer came out and said that he was uh, motioned to apologize for his actions backstage. But Jack made a point to come out this week and say that wasn't the case. Hands down, there's nothing really for Jack Perry right now. And even though he has smoking tk in months he knows that he can still have a lot in the tank if it's not with AEW. remains to be seen jack perry y'all so he's got permission though to be doing this stuff with new japan though right he does because he's on contract but it's kind of like a guy on my site situation i uh, see i i think this is all a work because it, this is a good way to reintroduce him build up the the simmering tension and then it will come to a boil when he comes back to AEW if he can get some spark out of this, you know? He I'm needs to come back and be with the Young Bucks. I think that'd be great. Ooh, spicy take. Yeah, something. But I think uh, the scapegoat thing, I mean, th this it all feels a little too orchestrated too for my taste. You know what I mean? Because, okay, in what real situation... Like this, okay. If this was a, if this was baseball, right? Oh, you screwed up. You got to fight. We're sending you to the Toledo Mud Hens. You're going to play in the minor leagues. That <laughs> happens. Mm -hmm. But in professional wrestling, when have we ever heard a story before where you're under contract and you go work in Japan when you're under contract to an American company, like and start doing this character work? I don't know. It just feels like a little masterminded. I don't know. It would be the end game. I mean, I've, it was it wasn't like Jack Perry was a huge star when this happened. It wasn't like it was a uh, uh, Jericho doing this. I mean, Jack Perry was still trying to figure out who the heck he was. Yeah, no no, wins. Well, he was trying to go from Jungle Boy to Jungle Man. Jungle Man. Uh, yes, uh, Jungle Boys to to Men. That's good. Gosh, Ooh, and they do right. drum and bass. Yeah, that oh. worked. That'd be good. Okay, um yeah. yeah yeah but like 90s drum and bass and house music um so yeah yeah it's a, it's a potential there but no I, think school he, guy. I love it he was trying to figure out where he fit the stuff with luchasaurus was good when when uh jr kept calling him jungle boy jack perry you knew that there was a little bit of a of a rebrand going on i don't know the scapegoat thing all of it like if this is organic more power to him for trying to to make his own way and make his own heat his own story but this feels a little like oh this is going to be a clever way to bring him back in and uh have a redemption arc i think i think what the problem with already with some of the stories that we saw today is that there are stories that we are seeing today uh there's a lot of every time that one of these stories come out it kind of feels like okay so who's feeding the dirt sheets right like it, it's very like I, that, that's what I like to kind of play when I see these kind of things because I can care less. Sorry, everybody. I can care less what Melcher says as far as uh, his opinion and whatnot because we all got opinions. Like what makes his opinion a lot more valuable than what ours is. We should have the, we should be the ones that have the headlines, you know, thrown out there, right? It should be like Flobo Voice thinks that Jack Perry or, you know, Glenn Rubens, I think that uh, Jungle Boy this, whatever. You know, that should be whatever. I'm just ranting. But for the most part, like, yeah, like I, I, I kind of dug it when there wasn't all this news coming out. 
Like I kind of just kind of let it be right. Like jungle boy coming out, Jack Perry coming out to new Japan. That was kind of cool. The first time it happened and they should have kind of, kind of just kept it going. It kind of left us wondering, like, is, is he still with AEW? Is he not? Is he, is he on? Yeah. But is able to go now. You have all these things like, oh, he asked for permission. He apologized. Like, who cares about all that stuff? You know, like I, I, I mean, I personally don't care. I think it just kind of getting a story out there for the sake of a story kind of feels like it's a slow news day in some to, to, to some people maybe. But I mean, hmm. I mean, it, it's fine for what it is. But I, I think some of the stories coming out kind of ruins it a little bit. No, I agree. What if they do a reverse MJF devil thing where? His re AEW debut is in kayfabe. He's like Tony Khan won't answer my calls, so he basically like forces himself into Dynamite or Rampage or some way that he comes back in, and it is that sort of outsider angle. I don't know. I think I think that'd be great. Yeah, I think that'd be great, especially with kind of the young bugs being the the mm -hmm. a little bit more on the exec side now, kind of like saying Tony won't re re wouldn't return my calls, but guess who did? Matthew and Nicholas did. Mm -hmm. I just think that'd be a great way. Bucks are already getting some great hill heat. Um, you know, it's kind of weird because it's like you have the all the AEW fans turning on Punk when he went to WWE, but then they're booing the Bucks, even though and and did boo Jack Perry, even though you know that whole thing happened. So you know, it, it, it's kind of interesting, and it'd be kind of funny to see that as well. But it's it's a perfect. I mean, obviously subjective, but it's perfect <laughs> perfect way to just kind of bring them back in, kind of saying like Tony Khan, f you. I got the bucks to back me out now. And you know what the money line is? Is he's like, Tony Khan, you ignored me. And I figure, uh, Okada Osprey, well, I had to go work New Japan because that's the only thing that gets your attention. Ooh, that, that's super meta. That is, yep. that is the IWC's <laughs> IWC right there. <laughs> Seven stars. Uh uh, what else is going on? Uh, world? WrestleMania weekend is officially getting bigger. Of course, you got the Hall of Fame, you got Stand and Deliver, and the Showcase of the Immortals. But the Slammies are making their return Sunday of WrestleMania, right before at night to the classic awards <laughs> ceremony from all different categories. Will probably be up for more display in the days to come. But there's going to be a lot of fisticuffs, a lot of shenanigans, and a lot of ways to say thank you for your service in and outside the ring for so many different categories. The Slammies are back in 2024. I like it. I dig it. I've always been a big Slimies fan. Uh, I remember the first time that I saw it was back in 1996 when they had that mm. special on the USA Network kind of around WrestleMania weekend. So I kind of like that they brought it back around this time of year as well. I know back in the day, it was always at the end of the year, uh, part of Monday yeah. Night Raw, which I still like. I, I was never, I was never anti slammy but now <laughs> it, it just, it's just something else to add on to WrestleMania weekend and agreed. I, 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 no complaints for me. Yeah, it'll be fun. It's going to be a fun WrestleMania week and weekend. So it'll be All good. Right. Now, you know what? Maybe maybe I'm not anti slammy right? But now you you announce this now? I mean, look, the end year awards at NXT makes sense. But you're just going to yeah. say, oh, by the way, we have an award show. You ever heard about it? Coming out in a week and a half? I need time. I need to know what the judging period is. I want to. Yeah, who's voting things. on this? Yeah. I, I will say at first, I thought it was going to be the judging period between Mania 39 and Mania 40. But then you have like one of the matches of the year is Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns from last year's Elimination Chamber. Ah. So it's like clearly, I don't know, there's a little wiggle room, but maybe they're just making up for lost time. But you know, I think I mean, Flobo just, I think Flobo just complaining just to complain. And that's also true. But let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I need directions. <laughs> ah, welcome back, Slammies. What else is going on? <laughs> That's pretty much it from the news things that we were told to talk about by our producers. <laughs> but um, okay. it's also WrestleMania season. I don't know if you guys are going to Philly. I know I'm not, but I would love to go. I'd I've love been to go there as before. well. I've been there. Is it I've, very... been to the, I've been to the airport. Okay. That does not count. <laughs> um, so let's talk about SmackDown tonight. We opened. With uh, people arriving, people backstage. Nice, nice build up. I like how they're producing this. SmackDown's done variations on this before, but I like that they kind of gave that big fight feel to uh, the show tonight with mm -hmm. the open. I agree. I, I liked it when they. Anything. I liked it when it when they do it with the NBA and the UFC, and I like it when they do it with the WWE. Yeah, in fact, most of the stuff they've tried have been working, which is why I think some of that stuff in that last segment was was sort of a rare miss. We'll talk about that. Um, production's been great though, and we started tonight with Santos Escobar versus Rey Mysterio. 
And uh, this is interesting because, you know, we if you would have said even a month ago, I think we talked about this very podcast, Flobo, we said this seems like a Mania-type match with the LWO versus Legato. Maybe that's the direction they take right. it back in. You know? Yeah, I, I'm I'm torn with this one because on paper it's like, oh man, this has been building for months. It makes sense. The United States Championship was are, are in the mix for a bit. Why not put uh, Mysterio and Santos Escobar in the next pay per view? But then it's WrestleMania. And you're like, well, is this a WrestleMania caliber stuff? I guess because it's, it's me and Mysterio. But then I understand why it's getting squeezed at the same time. So I'm torn. I think it's deserving of Mania, but maybe there's a spot for something crazy happening there. I, I definitely thought they were building to some kind of like mask versus hair. Uh, Santos Escobar's got some beautiful hair, uh, which would make sense on why, you know, the mask versus hair. But uh, I, I, I tweeted it. I do feel like they're going to build toward like a multi-man, maybe a multi-person throwing in, uh, you know, Ray, Carlito, uh, mm. LWO, and Zelina up against uh, Legato. And, yeah. uh, and now we see Dominic. Uh, and so maybe that it can either be like... Yeah, so we can either have an eight person to ten man, or eight or eight man or a ten person tag. But either way, I'm yeah. all for it. Although doesn't that see okay? I mean, just just real talk here for a second. Real talk. <laughs> like, if they put all of their uh, Latino stars in the set, like if Andrade, like Beer Money, saying Santos Dominic versus Ray Andrade. I mean that. Like I think if it becomes that multi man, I don't know. I w- I wish they were just giving some fresh mashups and fresh uh, challenges. Instead, it's always like, well, they work lucha style, so these guys have to be in a match against each other. Uh, yeah, I-, I think a lot of it comes from NXT's fatigue too, right? With yeah. uh, L- uh, the Los Lobos Locos. Shout out to Isa, y'all. Um, but but I'm with you. You know, here's Dominic. Where yeah, I know he hates his dad, but he- him coming out tonight was like. I thought you moved past this. Bro. Yeah, I thought we were done with this. <laughs> yeah, you got things to do, like some days to judge. I have no idea why he's out here, but if you're going there, it's not, it's not a bad idea. He seems very like a, a retread. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just seems interesting that that's where they're going. But I like the thing with Dominic showing up in the mask. Like, I always pop for that. I always pop for, like, the fake uh, luchador. I thought with Ray, that was good. But yeah, Dominic essentially causing the distraction, allowing Santos to get the win. Like, it, it felt a little fresh, but it's like, oh, yeah, they are going back in this direction. Mm-hmm. I know some people, uh, I even saw it in the chat, kind of saying like a father-son mania. I'm like, we saw it last year already. We're already seeing one rematch yeah, yeah. on mania. We're not going to see it again. Uh, but it does kind of throw Dominic in the mix. He was kind of a little bit of the odd person out, especially with uh, Finn Balor and Damian Priest in the tag team letter match. You have Rhea in the in the matchup against, um, what do you mean? Oh, Becky Lynch. Uh, so I feel like with all the good things that Dominic has been doing in the last year, he does deserve a WrestleMania match. I know Triple H has said in the past, we're not really going to try to jam everybody in in the WrestleMania card just for sake of it. We're going to give it to the people that maybe deserve it throughout the year. And I think, by all means, Dominic does deserve to have a WrestleMania match. Well, but then with Judgment Day, what does this mean for J.D. McDonough? Ooh, totally forgot about him. <laughs> the odd man out. Everyone else does, yeah. <laughs> Everyone else in Judgment Day has a Mania moment. Except poor JD. Mm-hmm. His initials are Judgment Day. <laughs> and I mean, he can't if, even yeah. get a match. Hiding in plain I, sight. Yeah. <laughs> I would predict he's going to have some kind of ladder match moment that'll maybe take him out of the match that maybe would cause, you know, them to lose. But yeah, I totally forgot about him. Sorry. Uh, Sorry, JD. Damn. Yeah. It, it'll be interesting. But it's what's crazy with Dominic, though, and I get why they want to add him to this because he is like one of the biggest deals in the company. He's proven that he's his own man. Uh, he's forged his own identity. He's so despised by wrestling audiences. It's it's almost a thing of beauty. And they can't keep him with Rhea because she's kind of straddling the line between heel and face. Um, so, yeah, I guess this makes sense. Putting him back into drama with Ray. 
I, I my only theory is that I really think there's a there's a corporate sit down writers room thing going. We have to give the crown the next generation Lucha to somebody. It's almost like if Superman yeah. died. Like who is a real Superman? Is it going to be Dragon Lee? Is it going to be Axiom? Is it, yeah, it going to be Steel? Is it going to be Eradicator? Yeah, <laughs> it's, you know what I mean. Like it, I think that's what it is. I think we put everyone in a match because they can see for real. Because Dominic <laughs> has the reaction, but he doesn't have them the move set. Santos has the body and the, and the lineage, but he doesn't have the charisma. Axiom has the speed and power but he doesn't have a voice so it's like who, who do you want to pick and i think that's kind of what it is a giant mess this is why i'm bummed we don't have the network anymore and the, for peacock they don't put in the same effort but they could do the search for the next ray mysterio the ray's gonna pass <laughs> give me your mask oh, yeah man. He's gonna... <laughs> that'd be fun that would be fun and interesting <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. The full if that was the match where it was just like you inherit, you're the next Rey Mysterio, <laughs> Rey Mysterio Junior two. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then Dominic has his first feud because he's like, that was my birthright. Like, this could be amazing. You Awful. know, <laughs> it's scripts. Scripts wins it all. Yeah, oh, that God. would be incredible. And he has to bring back the voice changer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be so good. Um, man. I don't know. We gotta we gotta figure something out though. But this, I mean, look, LWO was on fire a year ago. Legato, I still don't think is really. I think Santos is doing well, but Legato as a faction has not even reached anywhere near that level of where LWO was over the better part of the last year. Like they got to figure something out. And that money, yeah, that was hot. Um, but what what? Was, so I'm not. I was up on Raw lately. Was what other plans for Andrade have we seen? He's just been auditioning. Like, hey, remember me? Business backstage <laughs> next week. We'll talk about it. <laughs> Pretty much. There's really nothing more to it. Yeah. They should throw everyone for a curve and he can join uh uh the prophets and Lashley. Ooh. Wow. And, and he could say, like, I'm here to take you down, Ellering. It's you and me, old man. <laughs> wow, that talk about a swerve. Like, no one saw that, that coming. <laughs> wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> um Okay, so good first match, though. Look, these guys got a good chance to showcase stuff before that distraction. I thought the distraction was well presented, but we went from that into Bailey backstage thanking Naomi, and Bianca ain't buying it, um, given her grief about how damage control treated her, which was kind of cool. What do you think? I mean, uh, George, what do you think about like Bianca being the smart baby face here that doesn't trust Bailey? I love this because it is adding this common sense and logic to wrestling that maybe was over overlooked for a very long time. Cause it's like, why should she be up? Why should she be all, you know, lovey dovey with Bailey? Like Bailey and damage control did so much damage, no pun intended to the SmackDown you that pun. roster. You so meant that pun. I swear maybe, you maybe, yeah, uh, you, you know, they, they did do a lot of wreckage, uh, wreckage to the, to the SmackDown women's roster. And like, there's no reason. And, and Naomi wasn't there. If anything, like she was already gone. By the time that uh, damage control was put together, so she does. She has no white. I mean, she probably you know watched or whatever. But you know, just by being there, like she has no uh, firsthand experience from all, all the the wreckage that damage control was doing onto the SmackDown Women's roster. So by all means, like she has no idea. And just kind of having these conversations like out in the open, like I think it makes perfect sense. And you know, I I love these kind of backstage segments uh, where they add on. An, you know, kind of like a history, not just forgetting the past, but really acknowledging everything that's happened in the last two years. Yeah. Same boat. I like conflicts where you can see both sides and it doesn't happen all the time. And you shouldn't happen to have it all the time. There really should be scenes where people are clear cut right and wrong. But when that happens, you go, yeah, you're right. Bianca doesn't trust Bailey. Why should she? <laughs> and Naomi is more open because she was a TNA champion and no one cared about her. Before. And, and it's not even about trusting. It's not even about Bianca trust, not trusting Bailey. It's about what she did like it's like oh i trust you i trust what you're doing but i'm not gonna just forgive you just like that because all of a sudden you're you're a good person now right like it, it just total it just to me just makes total sense on on like it's not even just being stubborn or or, or saying anything like that it's just like hey like what am i just supposed to just forget let everything happen like absolutely not so i like that we even and i'm sure they're gonna make a note of it next week where it's like when bianca came out during the match it was bianca not not you know she still got beef with them and she's coming out more so for naomi that has nothing to do with bailey and i'm sure they're going to acknowledge that next week yeah well flobo did you uh put money down on the oc beating grayson waller and austin theory tonight 
Oh, man, they already won this week. So I was like, two in a row? That never happens. <laughs> I'm a smart man, Glenn. That's <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> what just happened? The OC used to be a thing. Now they're not, man. <laughs> I love the OC. I think, though, yeah, they weren't winning this match. I think they're going to probably do something and stand and deliver. Um, but, yeah. Like, it was pretty obvious this was Austin Theory and Grayson Waller's win tonight. What happened to Cedric and uh, Ashante? Weren't yeah. they supposed to be a team? Stop. Stop making up people who don't exist. Stop. <laughs> Stop doing that. <laughs> what kind of random name generator was that? Cedric was Alexander? Choose, yeah. <laughs> Cedric the Alexander. Yeah. Shanti the Adonis. Yeah. Maybe they're on main event. Team. What are they doing? Probably. I, can't, I don't have Hulu. Does anyone have Hulu? Oh. What's on main event? I do. That's how I watch Level Up. Oh. Not yeah. on delay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Although I did, I missed last week's level up. I gotta check that out. Oh come on, good. man! You missed that was a good one. I heard yeah. it was good. I yeah, yeah. Rin Sinclair. I mean, she's on there. That's like her and Dante Chen. It's like they're there every week. One of them is there. Yeah, no, I feel you. Uh, Grace Wall and Austin Theory look big time together now. Like I think they're in the zone. Um, Flobo left in protest <laughs> of that of that statement. Um, crash my browser. I guess they they guess they heard me out. George, what do you what do you think about Austin and uh, Grayson? It's got a lot of Miz and Morrison vibes, and, and oh, yeah. granted, I think Miz and Morrison are one of the most underrated tag teams that ever existed in the twenty first century. Uh, so these these guys just flow together, flow bow. Uh, hey. These guys just do that. These guys just kind of just go together really well, and yeah, I'm all for. And I'm, I'm predicting it now. I think they're going to be the ones that head on to to WrestleMania to be in the ladder match. Okay, maybe even winning the ladder match. Oof. Wow. Well, but you feeling them as champs? A town down? Yeah. Oh, A town down under? Down no. under. No, because if anything, I still don't know what Austin Theory wants to do. And and Grayson Waller has already proven that he can carry a, a segment. He can yeah. talk and he can sew when he gets beat up, which pretty much makes him invaluable. So I'm I guess I'm gonna say I hate tag team wrestling, but when 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 it when the <laughs> When the combination is so different, you wonder why are they together? Like, why would I train with somebody who has this level of star power? You don't like tag team wrestling? No, see, I'm not saying I don't. I'm just saying we have people who are so different. I thought that's what you said. No, no, no. I I mean, I like it, but I'm kind of like... I think they complement each other quite well. Will Mm. it be better, Flobo? Will it be better if they have if they have like a like matching tights or like a t-shirt to make it official i think their personalities are too similar but grayson waller has more charisma this reminds me when braun Strowman teamed with ricochet like when they walked down the ramp they look like miniature versions of each other but frankly they're almost too similar for me to care about them collectively you know too similar as far as like the bald head and the beard and the and the and the yeah i look at my muscles but yeah the moves their style was very different yeah, but what I, what I guess what I'm saying is it's a very fine line between being so different it doesn't work or so together it almost seems like a clone of each other. You know what I mean? I mm. think that A-Town Down is too similar, but Grayson Waller is way more charismatic, even though a, uh, Austin Theory has, and I hate to shame him, but the body. I mean, he has a, he has a, he's more abs than, than, than anyone else <laughs> in that ring that time. So. The most abs. The most abs. So they won tonight in a mm-hmm. pretty... No whatever, Lobo. They won. No, um... <laughs> So, uh, George, you know, now that you say it, I want to see them as champs. I think they will have a very fun reign as tag team champions. I think so too. I mean, I I think it's going to really add a lot. Uh, and and I I really I really hate when they kind of do this. They just kind of give it the belts to people because they need it. But it would do so much for that package. Like, it, I, I just them coming out as champions every week. I I think it's going to be must see TV. It's going to make them even bigger heels. Mm. Yeah, I could see that. And uh, in Raw, who's in contention still? Uh, you have. That's off the top of my head. Is it Alpha Academy? Are they in that one? <laughs> no, they lost. Oh, okay. Awesome Truth. Awesome Truth and DIY. Hmm. Right, 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 right. I mean, Awesome Truth and Judgment Day. That right there is a is a mania match. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you just do it with them because our truth's got some of the most long term storytelling. Do you think they're gonna do some kind of? thing i guess where they're gonna find a way to split the the titles at mania where they like maybe one team grabs a raw and the other team grabs the smackdown belts i think that would be amazing dumb we, we need two sets of titles bro yeah I, I, get, I get that but you put four titles on 
on yes. the, uh, a ladder and someone's going to grab one at once. And yeah, they gra- gonna... and, you, and and you know what? They're they're mixed mat- mismatched. So that way it's like our truth then for a week has to t- team with Austin Theory as the Austin <laughs> truth. No, I say dumb. It, it seems like it's going to happen. Like I'll, I, I think that's the reason why there's so many bodies there. But I just think that, man, I kind of wish that them either splitting it or just unifying them and not have the two title sets. Yeah. Um, and bring back that next year women's tag team title. I'm with that, yeah. Dusty Cup. Is that, cup? Is that happening so for the ladies? Much, there's so much female talent in NXT. Or, or they need a North American Women's Championship. But they're incorporating the the current tag team champions to go to NXT, though. They yeah, but no, no one... Okay, there, like, no world of plausible deniability does anyone think an NXT team is beating the Kabuki Warriors for those tag titles. You say that now, but I think Shawn yeah. Michaels is watching right now and say challenge accepted. Yeah, accept the, the Izzy Dame hate is pretty heavy there, Glenn. Wow. <laughs> you think... Okay, but wow. Austin's not eating the pin. I'll yeah. guarantee that. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. But North American Women's Championship in NXT, that is long overdue. Would you call it that? Yeah, because they have a North American Men's Championship. Fair enough. Right? I mean... I'm just, was not a wrong answer. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, something. Um, Io Sky took on Naomi tonight, but first she was backstage beating up uh, Bailey. She should have been watching her back. That's all I got to say. Watch her back, <laughs> Bailey. Wow. Yeah. I just love that we've had um uh I just love that we've had people be late to the ring because they were getting beat up. I can't remember the last time someone was late to the ring because they were beating someone else up. <laughs> that's a great observation. That's that's a good that's a good point. A yeah, th- that is some heel s right there. <laughs> like Especially because, like, we're so accustomed to, like, if somebody's not walking out, like, oh, watch your back, Naomi. It should have been Bailey that should have been watching her back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what did you think of this match? It was oh, great. Man. Yeah, Both it was of great. us. Great. Match of the night. Great. Match of the night. Loved it. Uh, of course, Eo Sky has to be protected, and Naomi has to eat another loss. I think she lost three in a row. But here's the deal. Yeah. I, I wonder about... But it seems to me, and maybe I'm wrong, that Bailey is going to win the championship at WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. Do we do we think that EO Sky's run is a bit of a bust because she's been castled the entire time? She's behind the group of, of the Kabuki Warriors, or is that a strength for her run? You know? I think she's gonna be more made at the end of this, but I don't think she ever reached the high I don't think she reached the heights of her potential. Mm, I agree. I'm with you. But the match is great, solid. I, I I thought it was great too. It's one of those things where it, I think it's going to be a great preview of what to see in the future. I think EO Sky is going to retain the title, and I would like to make that bet, uh, Floba, if really? you make it official. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think EO Sky is going to retain, and I think we're going to see a lot more title uh, defenses, uh, especially against Naomi. I'd like to see what these two can do on a, on a on a PLE. And uh, if anything, uh, we know Naomi slash Trinity in the past year. Uh, you know, she definitely had the, the nice shine and glow, I guess you could say, uh, on many TNA pay per views. Uh, and I like to see the continue that kind of uh momentum on These the WWE Kaylee's. I, I swear to God, the puns got the glow like uh Bruce Leroy, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm showing sure <laughs> up. And I love the finish, I love the finish. I love, you know, yes, Naomi lost, but it wasn't a clean loss. Um, and I, I, I can we make predictions on what's going to happen next week? Because I was kind of expecting it for it to happen this week. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. I think it's going to lead up to a damage control up against Bianca, Naomi, and Jade Cargill at WrestleMania. Wait, why would Jade even give a damn about anyone that's happening right now? And Tiffany Stratton, why would she even care if any of those things are happening? Because it's the women's division. You want to be the best, you got to beat the best. Okay, but they're above. They're below me. I, I just told you I'm the, I'm the blueprint. I told you I'm the next level. So, so if Morgan. you're Jade Cargill, <laughs> like, <laughs> how, how do you showcase uh, your greatness? You want to go after. You want to go I'm after. Not the, get to a multi one tag team match. That's for sure. What would I do gotta, that for? Well, plus it's WrestleMania. You want to be on the WrestleMania card. But any got- any opportunity you have to showcase your ability to be on that big stage, you're going to take advantage of it. Right, but you've already told me that I'm going to be debuting a SmackDown. I'm already telling people I'm the best there is. I'm going to go out there and make the moment about me, right? Especially when you have Mercedes signing an AEW. You wouldn't just put her in a tag team match. That'd be kind of a waste opportunity, no? So do you not have her at WrestleMania then? 
I, I probably would have her in the crowd or have her as really? an appearance, but I wouldn't have her in a match. She just she debuts next week. What yeah, but why would she... she show up next week if she's if she's not doing something in Mania? You would save it for the after Mania. Her, fir- her first match is already an attraction. WrestleMania yeah. is an attraction. You don't have to put that there. You need something for a backlash. You need something for the SmackDown after Mania. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I think they're going to hot shot something for Mania. The six woman tag is okay. Is Asuka doing all right? She was pulled off house shows due to an injury tonight. She wasn't as physically. She yeah, she didn't get too physical. I mean, she was there. I mean, obviously, we've seen a lot of times when people got injuries, they just kind of keep them away in general. Yeah. So, so the fact that maybe she did do a little bit uh, says a lot. Uh, so, but I still want to go on Flobo. So, what what's going to be Bianca? Is it is it maybe just keep it as a tag then? Could be Kabuki Warriors versus. Bianca and, and Naomi then? Okay, I'll, I'll buy. It. I don't like it, but I'll buy it. But I'm saying it, like you just want you just don't want Jade to be a part of some I, multi-person tag. It's not even that. I just don't imagine you make the whole deal of saying here's a promo and get, they gave the Braun Breaker promo treatment. It was kind of weird, but she came out and say I'm the next the big thing, and she goes right into a tag match. It makes no sense to me. If it happens a month from now or two months from now, whatever. But it's my first time on a show knowing full well Mercedes got a whole different like time to be on the mm. microphone, and I'm the, basically the answer to Mercedes. I'm not going to get myself into a tag match off the rip. But what if like they make it a big deal? Like you have like obviously it's three against two. You have Naomi and Bianca wanting an, an extra person. Isn't it a big deal for them to come to her? And say, hey, listen, Jade, like, you know, you know, we know you're here. We know that you want to make a big impact. We need you. We need you more than you need us. Will you join us for WrestleMania? The match will sell tickets. I just don't, I question the logic. I just still question the inside, in, in world logic of the Jade Cargill character. But if someone's like, we're making it happen, brother, then it's fine. Like, I'm not going to boo it. <laughs> no, no, of course. I'm just trying to make it make sense. I, I mean, still- it's. It's WWE. Like fair, 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 fair. <laughs> they're trying. I'm not saying they're trying to make it make sense. I mean, if this was obviously three years ago, it'd already be a thing. But you know, yeah, yeah. Dylan Matthews, Australian 299, saying over under the five titles change across NXT and Mania. Oof. I mean, Tony D'Angelo is winning that NXT championship. No, it's not. I think it's going to be transitional, unfortunately, because I think He's Trick's going to take it very quickly thereafter. He is not winning it. I don't think D'Angelo is winning it. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say the under. Okay. I'm saying the under. Across both shows. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it usually be a, a 0. 0.5. So I'm, I'm assuming he's saying 5.5. So I'll say the under. But if he's just saying five, I'm going to, I'm going to say the under too. I'm thinking four titles will change. I mean, if Cody wins, tag titles change. In theory, they could change twice. Mm-hmm. Bailey wins. I don't know. I mean, I think we get to five. That's just I, one in NXT. I think Rhea retains. Yeah, Rhea retains. Obafemi retains. I think Dragonov retains. I think Dragonov oh. retains. I think I think Roxanne wins. Roxanne beats Lyra. Yeah, I mean, I'd say five. So I'd go. I guess I'd go with the under. Oh, and Dylan copped out of his own question. He said five flat. That wasn't even an option. <laughs> Over under five. I choose five. <laughs> what? Coin toss. <laughs> gonna just land on his side. <laughs> Like that Twilight Zone episode, you can hear everyone's thoughts. Um, interesting, interesting. Uh, yeah, so damage control beat up Naomi after missed in the face. They're keeping it going. Pretty deadly was backstage talking to Kevin Owens and Nick Aldis, trying to get in uh to a tag team match. And uh, Randy Orton arrived. I liked Randy Orton being super polite to Pretty Deadly, even though it's gonna be in a match against them next week. I love Goofy Randall. He's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I like Goofy Kevin. Yeah. Just the whole like, just his like demeanor. I, I think this is where he's at his best. Where you know, even like, oh look, Randy, like, see what I did. Like, it's just like a little kid, but I, I loved it. I loved. It kind of reminds me of like when he was with Jericho. On um, like, they would just kind of go back and forth with each other. And mm-hmm. yeah, this is this is one of my favorite KOs. And uh, I'm hoping that we kind of see a little bit more. I don't I don't want to say dissension, but obviously they're both going to be going after a common goal at WrestleMania. So, you know, maybe it makes for the story where they're all going to be buddy, buddy up until WrestleMania. And mm. we end up seeing Logan Paul retain out of everything, you know, after everything. Yeah. It was a fun little backstage segment. Um, got a point though. Pretty deadly. They're like, we don't even have a match. Like, yeah, hold on. Aldous, 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 what's going on? And they yeah, lost. 
But th- 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 but I'm saying is that's why they interrupt KO, which is why it made like it made sense, logical sense. I was like, shut up, KO. We have more important issues, and KO gets mad. Yeah. Um, AJ Styles was sitting down with WWE's <laughs> digital team, and LA Knight showed up outside his house. <laughs> like, okay, 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 okay. Fobo, what'd you think of this? I don't know what it, the match they're going to have has to be sponsored by like Expedia or something because AJ went to Australia. L- LA Knight's going to his house. Like, can can no one handle their problems at work? Like, what what the hell was that about? <laughs> George, sometimes Flo- sometimes yeah. you just can't wait until Friday, Flobo. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when you got the access that you do, when you got the money that you're able to, when you got the miles racked up to fly over to Georgia, you're gonna <laughs> do what miles. you're gonna you're gonna do what you got to do to yeah. get revenge on the guy to get revenge on the guy that cost you the opportunity to go to to WrestleMania for the WWE Championship. Like, you know, I, I want to see LA Knight being like, look. <laughs> promised my significant other we were gonna use these miles and go to hawaii but i've got other business to settle how much extra for business class okay la night's yeah. got the miles let's let's make it work <laughs> and I, I like the... i said no no <laughs> today yeah I, and i like i like the execution more of the actual angle i liked uh i was never be a big fan of like uh uh, I I get it. I get it. it's movies, pal. But it's like I kind of like when they acknowledge the the cameras. So I kind of mm-hmm. like that they said, "Hey, we had our cameras here at AJ Styles' house to do something." And then you know you had the you, they acknowledge you know, hey, and then the police cam happened to pick up the the stuff with with LA Knight. So I like that they added that kind of realism to it instead of just kind of like what cameras? You know, you're in a movie. You're not supposed to acknowledge the cameras. But all the yelling and shouting and the police, like, look, this this was a distant third after uh, Samoa Joe and AJ Styles. <laughs> oh, and, appearance by Wendy, by the way. Yes, and uh, not as good as uh, Dominic crashing Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, it was That's better than it was, it was better than the Triple H uh, uh, storming into Randy Orton's house with his fake wife. Yeah, oh, um, Rollins and, and Edge, right? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say the edge thing. Um, yeah, they they go back to this well every other or every year. It seems like it was it was fine. It's gonna be a great match, but as a feud builder, I didn't think this got me more hyped for. It. In fact, it was weird to see LA Knight just sort of out in the wild. You're so used to seeing him in an arena with the crowd, yeah. so behind him, yeah. I, I think it's the fact that it's like, you know, a February or March in a muscle shirt. It kind of feels like a gimmick. You know? If you were him, March in a muscle shirt. Like, he was wearing like sweats and some, like some boots or something. It made sense. But he's kind of like, yeah, I'm off the gym, <laughs> hopping the Uber, AJ Styles house, please. Yeah. And then, Listen, brother, house. when you, you, when you got it, you show it. I mean, true, true. It's facts. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, final testament. The authors of pain took on the street profits tonight. Best match tonight. <laughs> Good man. The final testament was supposed to be this big thing. They were really pushing this. They got shirts. Like uh they spent they went on Fiverr and bought that icon to make the cross with the T and the F. <laughs> Minimum price entry. Right. Oof. <laughs> Well, George, let me ask you a question. What is the final testament? Do you know? Because I'm trying to figure this out. Uh, is it Psalms? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> There's no right answers. <laughs> I don't know. I don't got my Bible in front of me right now. Um, okay. I, I, I'm with Glenn. I, the, the guy needs to shave his head. The guy needs to bring the goatee back because he doesn't. He does. Uh, oh, a lot of people menacing. care. Carrion like, Cross as a fictional character has not worked in WWE. It doesn't matter what hairstyle Carrion in Cross NXT has. he worked. No, he did not. Don't great. give me that. Great in NXT. No, he, no, his entrance was great in NXT. The hourglass was great. Scarlet was amazing, but no one was like Samoa Joe sliced him to shreds on the microphone and beat him. You don't know what you have until it's like not there, yeah. right? So we didn't really think about it because he just looked like a badass mofo, no, right? He didn't. But yes, he did. No, with he the didn't. with the bald head and the goatee, and then you realize, like, wait, the guy's growing his hair out. Like he didn't 
this he doesn't look as badass. He, he just yeah. looks like a, like another like another jabroni. Yeah, he's starting to look like Gary Oldman or uh, Gary Sinise in Reindeer Games. Like yeah. it's just not it's not as menacing. He and Gary Sinise thought in Reindeer Games he looked menacing, but he didn't really look that menacing. Like imagine Stone Cold Steve Austin growing out his hair. Like it just wouldn't look the same. <laughs> you did not compare Karrion Cross to no, the greatest of all but time. But I'm comparing the bald head back. and the goatee. No, it doesn't matter. Look, everyone who says he worked is looking at his entrance, and but no one can remember two of his moves because one of them is a side of suplex or whatever. He never worked in NXT. TNA, I'll give it to you. But Lucha Underground, got, he was dope too. Sure, I'll give you that as well. But as soon as he got into the Florida and Stanford system, it's always been a guy playing a guy, and I know the guy. Who plays Karen Cross is probably a fantastic fellow, but I don't know what it is. He really in his is. Universe. I don't he know. Really, really guy, is a fantastic I'm, fellow. But I'm, but I'm saying a, the fictional sense of humor character, too, by the way. Yeah, the fictional he's really intelligent Karen, too. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. The fictional character, character Karen Cross, does not work. The Final Testament does not work. It doesn't. Do you think? Do you think yeah. yeah. Do you think he should bring back the mask and the and the skirt? Whoa, I think. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think <laughs> all of it is not working. I think all of it's a failure. I do think a repackage or reboot is ready for him. Or, or release, apparently. Or, or no, enjoy. I'm not saying release the guy because he, he apparently he has a, a good body and a good crew and he can do what he wants. And everyone seems to love to, love him. I'm saying is, we think of, let's say we're reading wrestling as a novel, which we don't do. As a character, I've never understood his motivation. I never said what t- makes him tick, no pun intended. It's always, I'm taking you out. Why? Because tick tock and never a conclusion for years. He took out AJ Styles for no reason. And now he's going after Bobby Lashley and he never said why. I can't buy no. into that. The novel now is being written by the author's of pain. I hate this job. <laughs> um, but AOP, they've been like signed for a year and a half back in WWE. And clearly, I mean, the final testament feels like a triple H project. I'm just assuming. Um, but it's weird that Lashley and the street profits who look so money together these guys have so much star power, but again, we don't know their purpose, their modus operandi. Um, so then getting the win tonight, it's just interesting sometimes because AOP, this is, this is a qualifying match and AOP couldn't even get a squash qualifying match to just give them like, this is what makes me feel like it's DOA is that if you can't even win the qualifying match, like they should have gone up against, they should have just smashed an NXT team. Or somebody just to give make make us think that AOP is at least getting something. I think that they're going to cost Lashley to Street Profits the, the return match later on. Okay, they qualify for the next round. I think they get the receipt there, and then it has a blow off match eventually. But I, like I said, that makes sense logically. But again, if I don't know, because again, because uh, Bobby Lashley and Street Profits are kind of heelish, kind of faces to begin with, and this happens, I'm like, who do I root for? What does everyone want? Is it a personal agenda? Okay, I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> all right, you get the idea. Yeah, um, I, I, I do get where you're coming from, though. I, I think there's a little bit of a misconnect, and I think the biggest misconnect is the hair. <laughs> but you know who's so committed to the bit are uh, Scarlett and Paul Ellering. Mm-hmm. But it just still looks like a group of people waiting for a bus. Like <laughs> they don't look like a faction, even wearing all the same shirts. Right. Yeah. Are they biblical? Is that what no? I well, it's the final testament. Right. But do they quote scripture? Like is it like a like is it like a, a thing? Like I don't know. Okay. You can't call it the final testament without having to be a biblical. That's what I'm saying. I don't know any scriptures. He's never quote anything. I don't know. Are they, are are they Christian characters? Like are they anti Christian characters? Are, that's true. They should have some more promos, you know, come up with their own uh, Ezekiel twenty five seventeen or something. <laughs> Something. <laughs> He's Ezekiel twenty five. That's yep. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much it. Like honestly, that probably would help a lot if like Karrion Cross is the kind of person that just lays down some like wicked monologue before it just beats you up. Like it, it probably would be like a, an upgrade. Give me something. Like something. it's just like oh, you know, it's like it just you know, I just need something cold blooded to tell to say before I whoop your ass. I'll take it. I'm all about that. Yeah, it's a good idea, Glenn. <laughs> something. Something. Although I, now that I can't unsee it. Ever since I was like, they remind me now of the ragtag group of energy vampires and Dr. Sleep. I'm just like, that's what the Final Testament reminds me of. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Sleep, such an underrated movie. Uh, I haven't seen it. Sequel to The Shining. 
that they made like 40 years later because that mm-hmm. makes all the sense in the world. But it's yeah, like, like Baby solid. 2. Have you seen well, Baby tell 2? That, tell that to Beetlejuice. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, okay, let's talk about this main event segment. If you like entrances, boy, was this... <laughs> Like I was thinking during this, I was like, "Do we need the full entrance every week of Roman of Cody?" Like this was a lot of entrances, man. Right. Got to warm I mean, up for you, WrestleMania's entrance, you know. You got you got to do it. I mean, when it's Roman, you got to do it. Yeah, I like that he waited to ask everyone to acknowledge him. But at first, I thought he was being humble. I was like, "Ooh, Roman's coming out and being human," you know. Mm-hmm. Kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, it, it is a little weird, like because like I want to say the segment started like around seven or six thirty ish. Um, yeah. like you had Roman commercial break or right before the commercial break, Cody walking to the ring and the commercial break, the Cody coming out. It's like, man, like they really had to do it like this, huh? Yeah. No rock this week, just Roman faced by Cody, and they're exchanging words, and it was kind of it was a very nuanced and almost reasonable dialogue they had compared to the rock saying Cody, he was a mistake. Also, I don't know about y'all, but I was like, where is, uh, where's my, uh, Friday affirmations from, uh, the rock on social media today. (laughs) The eight minute promos. Yeah. Where, where was uh, the rock saying F your story on uh, social media today talking about his, his goofy dog. Um, see Karen cross. That's how it's done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, so, you know, and Cody talking about Seth and the Shield and Team Rhodes beating the Shield, uh, giving them their first high-profile loss. It was interesting. But even Roman saying, like, you're the number two, but I'm not saying that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> you know, it was interesting. George, what do you think about this more... Um, thoughtful debate these two guys had tonight compared to what we've seen in the last month i liked it i mean overall i thought it was obviously you couldn't really kind of go full speed every single week because then you'll have nothing left for maybe the last couple weeks i i I thought on paper i thought they they hit a home run like you know obviously scripts blah 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 um i i thought it, it felt good it looked good but I feel like just some of the execution production wise, maybe it was a bit of a miss as far as the timing goes with maybe some of the snaps, but I thought the words were fine. I thought the promos were fine. Um, you know, no need to kind of, um, you know, turn it up all the way up. Like I mentioned, uh, I, it was a nice reminder that Cody and Roman is the actual main event of WrestleMania. Um, so it was. I think it was just kind of there serving that purpose that, you know, don't forget that these guys are, are the main event of night two. Yeah. Flobo, did this make you more hype for the match? Um, no. Had this happened two weeks later, uh, had this been the night before, I'd be like, oh, you're great. All the elements, oh, if you added the rock, of course. All the great, all the elements are there. The sneak attack that didn't happen, the stalemate, the everything. But this tonight came after a couple weeks of shows ending the same. So it kind of felt yeah. like a holding pattern. It kind of felt where you're playing GM mode and you have like that high level rivalry that you need to blow off, but your PLE is literally in two weeks. So you would say, all right, everyone's cutting promos. That's exactly what happened here today. Um, I, I I get it, but I wish I would have had one more match. It would be great. Yeah. You mean one more match for SmackDown? Yeah. It's, if yeah. it was a match like, between the the street profit match and this and maybe cut in half or a third mm-hmm. i think i've been better oh we could have easily gotten two more matches in the time these entrances took tonight mm-hmm. yeah that was interesting at the end though so what they tried to do so they had their debate and then you saw solo and you saw jimmy and then you saw jay and seth enter on cody's side like, yeah, the t- it w- the timing wasn't perfect. The framing mm-hmm. of the shots was a little awkward. Like, I get what they were trying to do in this cinematic build towards the, the you know, faction wars, for lack of a better term, uh, that they're building across Mania. But, yeah, I just thought they didn't quite stick the landing at the end. And, unfortunately, the production's been so on point lately. Mm-hmm. It's been so good that when they don't quite nail something, it's it feels it messes with my enjoyment of the rhythm. You it know? did yeah. feel weird, especially like it, like Roman did like, a, you know, he like a snap of his fingers, but like to a lot of people that from it being live, like, are you yeah. supposed to kind of see that notice that? Like, I feel like it wasn't 
it was good for the audience for the somewhat uh, for the people at home but what about for the people in 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 in, in where they were at so it's like then you had those guys and especially they're coming in from the crowd so it's kind of like the people were reacting like differently it's like oh i noticed jimmy uso and solo coming down oh and then like five seconds later it's like oh i noticed jimmy and solo coming down so it was just kind of a weird like domino effect of like people's reactions and i don't think it really you know and then you started hearing people cheering more when obviously they saw jay and and seth coming it, yeah just the execution of it on paper it was good but the actual execution of both the timing and the production i i think was a little off where it kind of you know didn't really end with such a bang like it did the last couple of weeks I liked, though, and I have to give them credit for this. I like that unlike most promos that are, oh, yeah, well, this is who you are and this is who I am. And you think this and you think that and all heated. This seemed like a thoughtful reason debate with points yeah. and counterpoints. Um, yeah, it, it felt like a more cerebral dialogue. Mm -hmm. I like that. I don't know that the average wrestling fan that loves the rock up there with his, with his one liners and stuff. Like I'm curious how this resonates with people that like the more uh, just smash mouth, the punchlines. Yeah. Punchline promos. You yeah. know, I think you're the nail on the head because you got that literally seven days prior. So you yeah, add yeah, yeah. that you tune into this. You're like, Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, where's the rock coming back? Lightning bolts. <laughs> <laughs> like it's one of those, like as a, as a viewer on the TV, I feel like it was fine. But if I was there in person, I'd feel like, wait, that's it. Yeah. Like, you're you're going to have at least like a dark match, right? <laughs> yeah. Like make fun of his dog. Make fun of his mom. Do something. Yeah. Make fun of his mom. <laughs> <laughs> bring out uh, uh, Wilmer and let's do Yo Mama and bring that back. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, wow. That's a, that's a throwback. Do you think at some point the Rock's going to maybe bring up, like, are they intentionally not including Brandy Rhodes at all? Do you think? Is she I mean, get brought in at some point? I don't think you mention her unless she's showing up. Mm -hmm. That seems like a weird. I just call. want her to come out and talk about how it'd be an open fight night or open mic night. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the problem. You can't do that without having Brandy get involved. And she's so good at on the mic. And she's mm -hmm. so good when she's got that fire in her. It's going to make I can't believe I'm about to use this term. It's going to make Cody look. This is WWE's perception, not my language. Some people in WWE probably think that's going to make him look beta male uh, yeah. to have Brandy, Brandy going toe to toe on the mic with the the Rock. But oh, Cody's feelings get hurt, and he slap doesn't even punch the Rock. He slaps him. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's that's uh maybe 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 that's why we're not seeing or any mention of Brandy. Uh, you know, so far. Backlash coming soon. I mean, she's too good in that one on one situation, don't you think? Don't you think? Like, I look, I'm more excited about seeing Brandy and The Rock go toe to toe on the mic than I am seeing Cody and The Rock ever have a face off in the ring ever again. Well, yeah, but I, I think you brought up a good point too, where it's like it, it, I, they don't want to get the impression that Cody fight, can't fight his own battles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, obviously it's different when you have Solo and Jimmy involved because now you have an excuse to bring on Jay and Seth. Uh, so yeah, there is that kind of dynamic. Plus, like you know, it, it's wrestling. Like it's kind of I'm people. I'm hope I'm thinking people uh, kind of assume that something that already kind of comes with the territory. Like you know, you want to get personal. Let's get personal. And just maybe there's not really that need uh, to to have Brandy Rhodes involved or Eden Styles was uh, her Eden Styles. previous <laughs> WWE name. <laughs> that is a deep yeah. cut. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Going back. Uh, I like tonight and shout out to to Roman for making this point in debate. She's like, "What are you running for governor or something?" <laughs> like, <laughs> anyone's kid here want a photo and autograph? I mean, they do. I, I like him pointing out like that he's doing audience politicking to to make himself the face of the company. That was fun to see Roman acknowledge that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm hundred percent, man. I love it. Yeah. I think I think I think the thing about Roman Reigns' promos is that everything serves a purpose. Like there's no yeah. wasted breath in whatever he says. That's why it's kind of you know, and maybe it has something to do with him being there every other every other month. Obviously now WrestleMania season he's there a lot more. But you know when he is on the mic, he kind of everything everything serves its purpose and everything has a meaning. So it kind of makes you listen to exactly every word that he's saying. Yeah. 
Uh, Fulber, do you first? Any final thoughts on tonight's SmackDown? I kind of wish WrestleMania was next week. We have one more week in between that, so I'm kind of to see who fills out the SmackDown tournament bracket. That thing that Raw didn't decide to do, which is kind of interesting. Um, that match is already I'm already sold for that one alone. Uh, I hope that LA Knight and AJ Styles get a stipulation. Maybe Boneyard. Who knows? Uh, that, <laughs> I'm in. Probably not Boneyard. <laughs> oh, come on, Glad Boo. <laughs> I mean, if we're gonna have a cinematic a cinematic match in uh, Philadelphia, it's got to be on the uh, Rocky Steps, right? Uh, yeah, put that in there. <laughs> yeah. Man, I hope Stallone does something. Given that, like Cody has talked about how like watching the Rocky movies has been some one of his biggest source of inspiration in recent years. He's Stallone totally should... going to do the intro. Uh, yeah. I mean, he will. But I mean, Stallone should do something really goofy, like come out with Chad Gable or something. Like, oh <laughs> no, no! You know what they'll do? Goofy. <laughs> they'll show Cody's thing last year, and then they'll get Stallone with cody on the rocky steps and stone's doing the sunshine and rainbow speech from rocky balboa oh yeah i call it rocky six but oh yeah i'm in it <laughs> yeah <laughs> i saw wooden is done cody <laughs> love that speech. love that movie mm -hmm. if you, if you say i'll watch that over any rock like that's my favorite movie it's my favorite rocky rocky movie as well. and plus yeah. it's got the best wrestling name mason the line dixon yeah yeah hands down oh wow so man are we agreeing on something for a change this is great you're having a moment <laughs> rocky six is so good Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. Somebody, no somebody, business being that good. Sorry. It's funny. Somebody in the chat said Brandy at Mania for a reason for a second because it was spelled differently. I was like, Brandy the singer? Is she you want her to do like the national anthem <laughs> of America the Beautiful? In my room. Yeah. Oh, sitting up in do we get room. LL? Do we get LL for the remix? <laughs> Something like a phenomenon. <laughs> yeah. Uh you know what's weird? I didn't realize that LL was only on the remix of sitting up in my room. Oh, really? Yeah. Because yeah. I heard the regular version. I was like, this is where's where's LL? <laughs> <laughs> the regular one is a cookout classic. Brandy, Brandy, uh, she did her remixes right. You know, I want to be down yeah. with Queen Latifah, Yo Yo, and MC Light. R.I.P. Yo Yo. <laughs> wait, Yo Yo passed away. Yeah, Yo Yo the rapper. I, when did wait? When did this? When About did like this... a week and a half ago. Oh shit! Yeah, under the IBWC. Mm -hmm. Um, man, I feel like I'm bummed. I watched the unsung about Yo Yo like two years ago. Mm -hmm. It was so good, and um. Talk about Ice Cube, like putting her over. Mm, so on that one song, yeah. Bonnie and Clyde yeah. theme. Well, not only that, but uh, on "It's a Man's World" uh, oh, yeah. on the Cube album, then doing Bonnie and Clyde, "Can't Play with My Yo-Yo." Like, yeah, like he really represented and elevated her, and I thought that was so always so cool. Speaking um, of which, like I'm surprised that like Ice Cube uh, Junior like uh, never wanted to yeah. kind of get involved with like pro wrestling. Yeah, like, I mean, he's talking yeah. about it all the time. Yeah, be like, hey, man, can I be involved? I'll, I'll bring my dad on to do, like, you know, wrap somebody out to the ring or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Man. Okay, I'm checking you his Wikipedia page. I'm not seeing She's alive. Thing. I don't know why. <laughs> She's not dead. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. thinking of Boss. Boss was the boss one that passed... yeah, Good boss Lord. was the one that passed away. I'm sorry. I, I I apologize for anybody that that I got thought a you little... were panning. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. thought I, I apologize. I, I'm a little upset. this now too. You're just bringing me down tonight because I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> no, to, it was boss. To her her spot on the AMG record. Like my sister is a B, and then as a kid, I'm like, whoa, that's really AMG's sister. No, not really AMG's sister. Uh, boss is like one of the great what ifs to hip hop though because she yeah. dropped that first record. That was fire and was everywhere, and then like no real major follow up. George, how'd you manage to drop two bombs in the same episode? Yeah, you said no, I'm just kidding. It's no, actually sorry. boss. No, Good I, night, everybody. Uh, <laughs> I, apo I apologize to the to the yo yo fans, but it was boss that unfortunately Good. passed away. Of um, man, we're gonna go down the the '90s hip hop. Uh, and uh, AMG's now. debut boss debut record. So AMG's debut record is near flawless. Uh, maybe maybe a little aged poorly and outdated in some of its viewpoints, but banger after banger on that. Uh, but Boss though, Boss was a huge huge deal for like mm. female gangster rap. Yeah, especially during that time where it's kind of like really non-existent in some ways, you know. Yeah, I mean it was Rage, Lady of Rage. Yeah, Lady of Rage. MC Everyone, Light. Queen Latifah Light. was a pioneer. Well, although not really in the gangster category, though Queen Latifah is phenomenal. Yeah. Right? Um, man, now I'm bummed out. Sorry. So, Good everybody. Uh, <laughs> Paramount Plus put up a bunch of classic episodes of YoMTV Raps. It's wow. not always complete. Like 
heavily edited and sometimes the sometimes they have the videos that were originally in the episode and sometimes they replace it like if you watch an episode where uh like james brown stopped by the studio and then they're showing like shimmy shimmy y'all and the video is like that no this james brown thing happened in 92 you can't show that. <laughs> right. it makes no sense yeah I, yeah I I, 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 yeah it's like respect the authenticity of it you know they have the but episode like, though yeah, yeah, i was gonna say just be like in living color where you just if you can't play it just just cut it out of the dvd release yeah yeah um they have the episode though with nwa and uh yeah both dr dre's together in the same place uh yeah. but no and then fat five freddy and they're on the truck rolling through compton speaking of nwa i have like a tiny like a mark story right yeah please. a Mar marky story or story where it's like i was in uh, elementary school and uh there was like a after school like the after school counselor you know whatever supervisor was like talking about nwa right and i'm and i walk in and i was like little kid right six or seven years old and i'm like you know it's not called the nwa anymore they're called wcw now like i was that much <laughs> i was that much of a wrestling mark that i had no idea what nwa was or i only knew nwa as a professional wrestling company or promotion or whatever it was the you know the, the whatever it was called right you know so i was like and i look back at them like wow what a wrestling mark i was back in the day like mark. no no idea what, what nwa was i only knew them as wrestling <laughs> see i go the other way every time people talk about it. oh nwa is coming back and i'm like that thing they were going to talk reuniting with snoop dogg because that's kind of weird <laughs> yeah. yeah bill um, corgan's in it what bill corgan <laughs> is hanging with snoop dogg <laughs> that would be amazing it's like we got dr dre mc ren dj yella and billy corgan <laughs> Dude, Straight Outta Compton is literally one of my favorite movies of all time. I mean, a little revisionist about some things, but yes, yeah. it is, and and it it has got one of the best endings when they're just pumping it and you go on to see what everybody did after. Mm -hmm. Like, it's one of the most triumphant endings yeah. of any movie ever. But I wish they would have. I mean, th that movie. It's like how BET did the new edition story over three nights. Mm -hmm. You know, like that NWA thing. Like that could have been like easily a ten-hour streaming series. Yeah, and I love. I love speaking of O'Shea. Like I love the the no Vaseline scene or skit or oh, scene scene. The yeah. no Vaseline scene. I was like, man, what? Like that was great c cinema right there. Probably uh, one of the best diss tracks ever. I was Facebook friends with uh, Jerry Heller before he died. Oh wow, oh. interesting. Yeah. Keep meaning to read his uh, his autobiography. <laughs> i'm very That's curious so. his perspective on everything yeah yeah definitely uh i remember after ever after that movie came out like everybody kind of knew who he was but in in a negative I mean, way right so like there's so much more to that story that like just more than what the movie portrayed yeah and why was there no jj fad cameo because that was like the big ruthless records hit <laughs> i'm my my life dream my life goal is to be able to uh karaoke the the singing uh, hit a baby D I'm like, Oh my like, okay, that's impossible. <laughs> I'm some like, yeah. you know, like that's my life goal is to be able to, to karaoke that part of the song. You guys are old. <laughs> You're not familiar with supersonic flow? <laughs> Don't put me in your question situation there, Glenn. Because if I say yes, I'm old as well. <laughs> How come they never did like a if there was a, if this was today, they'd totally have like an NWA uh merch with like the NWO writing. Now that I'm looking at Flobo's hat. Or vice versa, like the old school, the NWA, but in you know, but it says NWO instead. If this crazy. was like indie wrestling, that'd totally be like one of the top sellers. I got them over here. Yeah. There's so many. Okay, so here's it was this we're talking about. So I'm gonna go even older on this. And my dream, <laughs> and I might do this in retirement, <laughs> like because if no one else does this, somebody needs to produce a two-hour documentary about the Roxanne Wars. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm with that. Sure. Yeah, there's the episode of Beef. You don't know about the Roxanne Wars? Mm -hmm. Okay, so UTFO comes out with a song called Roxanne, Roxanne. And it's all them. It's all UTFO. Uh, uh, Dr. Ice, Kangol Kid, et cetera, et cetera. Talk, like, picking up on a girl. So what happens is UTFO, I guess, flaked on a concert, and a local DJ was like, oh, we want to throw some shade at UTFO. And so a young lady by the name Shantae takes on the moniker Roxanne Shante and releases a record called Roxanne's Revenge, where it's her responding to each guy in UTFO and dissing them. That record gets so popular, UTFO says, we need to do our own version of that record. And they trot out uh, a model and a studio uh, vocalist that they write the rhymes and they call her the real Roxanne. Now, if you're on the East Coast, Roxanne's Revenge was big. If you're on the West Coast, the real Roxanne was big. Just weird how that worked. I know the real Roxanne by heart. 
because that's I grew up in on the West Coast. Oh wow! Um, yeah, I'm, look, I'm looking at Wikipedia. Like this, for whatever reason, I've like never heard of this at all. Okay, You've never. Well, okay. Then, oh. then it gets even better. Then more people start releasing records. Like we're Roxanne's parents. Here's our song. Someone's like, I'm Roxanne's brother. A little girl puts out a record. I'm little Roxanne. People put out dance songs called Do the Roxanne. Like it's crazy. This spawned more response records than any other record in popular music ever. And like helped solidify, I think, hip hop as like a mainstream music form. Oh wow. Yeah. I need to I need to see anything about this. Yeah. Well, if they do one, you need to be the guy in the documentary because you got so hype. I'm so hyped for it. And, and my favorite. And then under it, I'll around. say Glenn Rubenstein, UTFO expert. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, and in fact, here's what I want to do. Because in the here's my idea. I'm gonna give it to the people. I don't have time to do this. <laughs> if I'm a rapper right now and coming out, you know yeah. what record? You know what record I'm doing right now? I'm doing the son or daughter. I'm doing the child of Roxanne, and I'm releasing a new Roxanne record in 2024. <laughs> About which member of UTFO hooked up with my mom, Roxanne, <laughs> and made me. And then I'm turning into a Mamma Mia style Broadway musical and film. And maybe we get Meryl Streep to play Roxanne. Probably not going to find It was just an idea. Or Angela Bassett. Yep. I co signed that. That'd be dope. <laughs> it's funny. When you said Roxanne Wars, I'm like, what? Like, I'm thinking like the police. And then, like, I remember fast forward to like Praws from the Fuji's, like, releasing like a Roxanne. Uh, his well, version did, of the Roxanne. Yeah, well, he did the remix with Sting, and he put in the Roxanne, Roxanne, because that's yeah. from UTFO. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think the world is ready for uh, Roxanne's baby, all grown grown up as an MC, <laughs> trying to figure out which member. And the Kangol kid, unfortunately, passed away. One of the things that brings me the most joy ever, like you know, when you watch videos, for some people it's like, oh, surprise kitten or whatever. I love more than anything. There was a hip hop festival in Brooklyn like 10 years ago. And Ken Gold Kid comes out, does his verse from Roxanne, Roxanne. And then Roxanne Shantae pops out and does her rebuttal. And they did it live together and they're hugging after. Like, I just, I cry just watching that every time. Yeah. Makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah. I think she like got like paid for life through royalties and stuff. Like, she can, she like, yeah, got to go to school for free and everything. It was great. There was a Netflix movie. Called mm -hmm. Roxanne Roxanne about Roxanne Chante. Not so much about the song, but good dramatization. And she grew up in the same uh, complex as Nas. So the oh, little wow. baby yeah, Nas I, in the I movie. That. Yeah, little I, baby Nas talking to her. <laughs> I know it's cute, Burrow, but I don't the same building. So. Yeah. So there you go. A little history for y'all. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we were able to talk a little bit of wrestling in this uh, 80s hip hop show. Friday night. Show. Yeah. I'm glad Yo Yo's still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, not, not not glad that boss isn't. Right. Oh, no, we we're, we're, we're going up, and then you just went right back down to where we were, man. <laughs> Poor boss. Um, man, like, but it's, this is the weird thing. Just while we're talking about this, it's <laughs> interesting that with wrestling and Gen X stuff, like, there's so much preservation of like WWE, like, is so high on their own revisionist history. Like, there's tons of documentaries and stuff preserving wrestling culture. There's stuff about every pop piece of pop culture that's out there. It is a little weird with hip hop that there's not more being done to preserve and tell the stories of the early days, like you know, seventy late seventies through early nineties in hip hop. That bums me out. I think with music, especially hip hop, everything just moves so much quicker than everything else. Yeah. Um, that like, yeah, it's easy to kind of forget the, the the OGs. I guess you can say, you know. Yeah. Yeah. At least not for us, obviously, but obviously with the with the newer generations, what are the I don't know what they're called now, but the gen TikTokers, whatever, you know. The like especially where it's like it's not like it, like for example, like you have like like if Lauren Hill releases an album tomorrow, right? Like it'd be the greatest thing, but it'd be like only hot for like a week or two because it's already like moving on to the next thing. Yeah, culture moves too fast now. Yeah. Blue you saying Cody Woods is the no. Cool. How's nice. that work? The jackets, man. I mean, Grayson Waller looks like the love child of Vanilla Ice and Paul Walker. Not, not Marty, Marty Wahlberg, as they call him, they call themselves in the Indies. Really? Oh, yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah, everybody Smith did play Vanilla Ice on Halloween. That's true. And his career was yeah. launched because of that. Uh, A1A Beachfront Avenue. Everybody, have a great weekend. Thanks for hanging out with us. George, thank you for. Uh, Showing out tonight. 
And of course. Thank you. And uh, uh, I'm out next week. I'm out Tuesday and Friday. You'll be in good hands. Issa will be back. We're going to make it through. It's all going to yeah. be good. Cool, everybody. Have a great weekend. Go listen to uh, to Boss's debut record and her collaboration with AMG. It's quite good. Follow at G Hermosa. Hermosa with a Z. What was it? Flobo Boy, Sam McLean, Rubenstein. We'll catch you back here next time on the Wrestling Inc. Podcast. Take care. <laughs>